moving right along, the two things that you keep hearing is character and academics. And this leads us to our, uh, our final speaker, Eileen Daly. Eileen graduated from Sonoma State University majoring in psychology. She went, she went on to earn her master's in sports psychology at JFK University. Eileen has been a member of the campus community since 2005. Her first professional position with the Spartans was as a lead academic counselor for athletics. In 2007, she was promoted to an assistant athletic director position. Through 2011, Daly was a central figure in the department major improvement in the NCAA measurement of academic progress, progress rates. In 2011, she accepted a university position as the associate director of undergraduate admissions and outreach. Eileen is currently in the senior associate athletic director for academics and student services. Without a doubt, our most important speaker, because like both coaches said, without grades, you can forget about moving on. And that is the truth. So help me welcome Eileen Daly. That made me sound super important, which I am not. <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me here tonight. Um, Obviously, we had a reunion with Coach P, which I'm a little starstruck seeing him tonight. We had a pretty good, pretty good run at San Jose State. I am here to talk about the super exciting academic portion of student athlete. Um, the biggest thing I want to throw out there tonight is that your academics are 100% in your control, which is huge, because nothing else is in terms of getting offered a scholarship or being offered a position on a team. Your academics is. 100% in your control, which means you're the one putting forth the effort, right? You're the one doing all the work, and you're the one that can set yourself up the best in this situation if you want to be a collegiate athlete, if you're, if you're going to be blessed enough to be offered a position. So I've got a couple key things. First of all, when we talk about um, qualifier status, which Coach P brought up, we're talking about the eligibility center, um, which used to be called the clearinghouse for those old school people as Coach P mentioned earlier, and I'm an old school person too. Um, so we now call it the Eligibility Center. Um, and we're looking at two things. We're looking at academic certification, and we're also looking at amateurism. So we need to make sure that our student athletes come in either D1, D2, or D3, we're never paid uh, to play anywhere, uh, which is gonna hurt their amateurism. So that's the second part. Um, in terms of initial eligibility, we are looking at qualifier status, and the biggest and most important thing to know is if you are a qualifier, you can practice, you can compete, and you can receive your scholarship. If you're not a qualifier, you cannot. But there's also a new category in the qualifier status. There's qualifier, academic redshirt, which is brand new this year, and then the non-qualifier. And the non-qualifier cannot practice, compete, or receive aid. Um, they can be at your campus, they can use your academic facilities, but they can't reap the benefits of those of the other things I mentioned. So when we're talking about qualifier status, we're looking at what they call 16 core courses. So the good thing is, is they almost mirror admissions for CSU. So we've got 23 CSUs in the state of California, and we almost mirror the, the 16 core courses. So for the students in the room, have you heard of the A through G requirements? If you haven't, just go, yes, I totally have. So your parent doesn't have to ask you later. Say, yeah, I totally know what those A through G requirements are. Um, they're also mirroring your graduation requirements. So we're talking about the four years of English, the three years of math, Algebra 1, minimally Algebra 1 geometry, or Algebra 2, or higher calculus stats, those types of things. Um, two years of science. We typically see biology and chemistry. Um, we also need, you'll see foreign language in there, a couple years of foreign language. That'll be the core courses. And then lastly, which is new this year, is those courses have to be completed 10 of them, 10 of the 16 core courses have to be completed before your senior year, okay? And of those, seven of the 10 have to be in English, science, or math. So no longer can you, that senior year, try to make up six of the core courses because your GPA isn't high enough. Um, they're gonna lock in your grades right before senior year, seven of those core courses, okay? Actually 10, I'm sorry, 10 of those core courses. That's all new. Um, we used to be able to make up coursework in the summer. We used to be able to make up quite a few courses the summer after you graduated high school. Um, and so the NCA is, is put a kibosh on that. And so the, the requirements are much more stringent and they're much more time specific. So there is a sliding scale, just like CSU admissions, where they're gonna take your core course GPA and they're gonna take your test scores. Um, and there's a sliding scale for all three categories, for qualifier status, 
We're going to need a minimum of two, three with all those core courses. And then they've got the academic red shirt, which is the 2.0, which used to be the qualifier GPA. So you've got the 2.3, you've got the 2.0, and then a non-qualifier is not meeting the 16 core courses or they're not meeting that sliding scale. Okay, so we've got the qualifier, the academic red shirt, and the non-qualifier. So the academic red shirt in the middle can receive aid and can practice, but they cannot compete. So they're at your campus, um, that's why they're calling it the academic red shirt because it's a red shirt year for them. So they potentially what they call it is sitting a year of residency, um, get their academics under control, they can practice with the team, but they can't compete. Does that make sense? We've got that three new categories. Um, I did want to let you know, Coach, too, my, my daughter wanted one of those sleeves. I told her no, because I'm old school. Right, Mackenzie? None on the sleeve. Yeah. I said, do you need it? She's all, they just look cool. I'm like, yeah, no. Um, okay, we've talked about the four courses for you guys. Talked about the three different stipulations. And then, as I mentioned before, with this being in your control, um, everything needs to be done early. So... We kind of know in, a, in college athletics that if you're not registered with the Eligibility Center and you're a junior or senior, you're probably not a qualifier. So we're not going to be as interested in you. A coach can go in there and give us your social security number or your student ID and we can look you up on the Eligibility Center to see where you're at. And now they have an early academic qualifier. So you can actually get certified after six semesters if you're meeting benchmarks. You can get qualifier status early which is a huge selling point for you when you're spelling the, co the head coach's name correctly and <laughs> writing them letters, um, or you're at um, a camp and you're talking to them and you've got that in, in your pocket, that's huge for you. That's gonna put you one up from everybody else that's either not registered with the Eligibility Center or that is that is waiting to be cleared as a qualifier because they had to make up some work or whatnot, okay? And I think for me, my stuff's not as fun as theirs. <laughs> I got, I got the, the boring stuff. Um, lastly, I did want to point out just one last thing. Um, for, for qualifier status, they're also going to permit you to allow some eighth grade or junior high work um, to count toward the qualifier status of those core courses if you have them on the high school transcripts. And the courses that we see more often than not, the topics would be math. We see Algebra 2 sometimes on there that students have taken out in eighth grade, get it on the high school transcript, and it's got to be on those 48 age list um, for that specific school. And then we also see um, foreign languages a lot. We'll see either American Sign Language or Spanish or whatnot taken, at the, taken in eighth grade. If you can get it on the high school transcript, that's huge because it'll count toward those 16 core courses. And that's pretty much it for me. Mine wasn't as exciting, was it? Um, but I think Coach is going to open it to, for question and answer, and I will...